Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of HomeKit <laughs> Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara. I don't know why I said my name so <laughs> weird today. Andrew O'Hara. <laughs> O'Hara. Yes, Andrew here is my pal and a man who once saliciously exchanged phone numbers with a very attractive turtle under his desk. It is Steven <laughs> Robles. I, I don't even know how you come up with those on the spot. I mean, that is a... I don't even know. I don't even know what to do about that. But, Andrew, oh, my goodness. First of all, it is Monday, September 18th. iOS 17 is coming out today. we got to talk about that. Pre-orders for all the new iPhones happened this past Friday. I want to talk about what we ordered, of course. But it, 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 Oh, my goodness. It's just been crazy, huge <laughs> week. Crazy stuff. Now, listen, th there's lots to talk about. I don't want to rehash all the announcements. Andrew's got great videos up on the channel talking about all the updates and changes. But there are some actually HomeKit-related news as part of the iPhone 15 lineup, believe it or not. And uh, I don't know. I think we should get into it. And you also have a case in hand. That I would like to talk about because I ordered one too. It's on the way. Are you going to tease it? Oh my! You got all the cases. All the cases. <laughs> and you just held up all the colors. This is good. So help me decide on what to get. So, all right, let's talk about the iPhone 15. This was not mentioned in the keynote and directly HomeKit related, but apparently Andrew, the iPhone 15 lineup has a thread radio built into the phone. I don't even know. I mean, I guess it will communicate with Thread mobile devices. Apparently, people at the event tried asking the Apple employees standing around, like, "What is this Thread radio going to do?" And uh, I don't even—I don't think they knew what it was going to do. Andrew, what is this thing going to do? It's exciting. Thread in the phone. I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, from from my understanding, this is going to allow direct communication to accessories. So mm. it. it Basically, you've got your thread lights, you've got thread switches, anything like that. Right. In the existing right. world, your phone does not communicate to them, right? Because it's thread. There is no thread to iPhone connection. So right. those thread devices hop onto your thread border router, uh, which is on your network. So your phone will communicate with your border router, which will then relay that to your thread devices. Now, that jump is pretty minimal. Honestly, compared to five years ago, Stephen, when we were like doing everything with Bluetooth and some things could take seconds to yes. respond, yes. Uh, Thread is pretty incredible with how Amazing. it works. So it. we are miles ahead of where we were, but this would allow you to just communicate with those things directly. And I'm mm -hmm. pretty excited to see if we can tell a speed difference. And it's going to be really hard because we'll never know <laughs> what route that, that transmission took. So that is true. We'll, we'll play around with this, but I think that's what's going on here. And I believe this is like the first time a Thread radio has been put into a smartphone. Uh, yeah. Similarly, this is also like the first one certified, or not certified, but to include Qi 2, which we'll talk yes. about in a moment. But like, yes. what if you first hear for, uh, for a smartphone? You just gave me an idea, too. For the Apple Vision Pro, some app developer out there, create an, I don't even know if this is possible, an app where you can see the wireless transmissions happening live <laughs> in real time in real augmented threads. reality. So you can hold up your phone, and you turn on a light switch, and you see the thread just go... You just see the thread signal just go right from your phone directly <laughs> like to the light switch. Spider-Man web. Exactly. exactly. Or maybe or, or you don't have thread in your phone. You can see it pinging from your HomePod to your <laughs> Apple TV to your border router. I mean, that would be that would be amazing. There are apps where you can see, like, Wi-Fi signal, at least not, like, in the air. But, you know, it tells you the strength and, you know, distance and all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying. Apple Vision Pro with augmented reality, like, see all those signals. That also might be terrifying because you'd probably like turn that on and just see that you are being inundated with wireless frequencies, <laughs> just like like uh, like into the Spider Verse, like web of just everything from FM radio to your Wi-Fi network. But yeah, I'm excited. Thre I mean, thread in a phone, that's cool. And then Qi two, I think Apple actually mentioned Qi two in the keynote. I don't think, I think so. Did they? You don't think they said Qi two quickly? I, I was writing said, a lot, so I did. I, was I did lot. miss a lot of things. I thought I thought it was during the iPhone 15 segment. You know, they, they talked about connectivity, which I, they just I think they on purpose kind of delayed the USB-C announcement. They're like, let's talk about connectivity wireless first. And they talked about the ultra wideband chip, which we should also talk about in a second. But G2 is on the entire iPhone 15 lineup. It's not certified, quote unquote, yet, but I imagine that will happen soon. And so you'll be able to have 15 watt wireless charging via G2 uh, on all the phones. So like rumored we have it there it is we do and it's it's so it's so confusing and honestly like 
Oh man, like, I had a video that went up that should have made it easier, like before the announcement and then post announcement, it's even more confusing. And mm. then we had like a plethora of articles come up from multiple sources that are like one is coming up saying iPhone 15 will only support seven and a half watts of power on Qi 2. And then other one saying unclear, and other one saying unclear, another one saying seven mm. and a half watts, and the other saying 15 watts. And it's mm. just. The, it's not out there yet, so I can kind of explain basically what is happening, and that's okay. that Qi 2 is not out yet. Qi right. 2 does not kind of like, I believe it's supposed to be launching in October is what I had heard. And mm. we saw all those devices announced at IFA, and none of those are also on the market. So nothing is on the market and certified with Qi 2, and yet we're one week away from an iPhone 15 being in people's hands with Qi 2. So I don't know how this is going to work, right? So we're not going to have any Qi 2 devices at first to test, and then we'll right. have to wait kind of, like, I don't know if the certification for iPhone 15 will happen before or after the phone launches, right? Like, is this going to come through at the last second, or mm. is it going to wait until October when there's actually devices out on the market, and then they'll get certified, like, retroactively? Right. I don't know, but that's, yeah. that's the confusion. So I don't think Apple can say you know, it'll support 15 watts of power on Qi 2 or anything because Qi 2 isn't out there yet and it's not certified. So personally, and from the accessory manufacturers that I have talked to, they expect 15 watts of power on Qi 2 to iPhone 15 series. Like that's okay. the official word as best that we can get until something official happens or until Apple confirms something, but it should give us actual Qi 2 with 15 watts of power. Okay, and along with... Chi too. I think we should put this right here. I think we do have to say goodbye and a fond farewell to two I Apple accessories. Wanna. I don't listen. I don't want to either, Andrew. I was eagerly awaiting, at least somewhere in the keynote, where Apple was like USB-C, blah blah blah, and we're updating the MagSafe Duo and the Apple MagSafe battery pack with USB-C. Wasn't in the keynote. Like Andrew's holding up the MagSafe Duo as it flies away. And then I thought, okay, well, let me check the Apple Store. Because, you know, sometimes Apple updates things that they don't mention in the keynote. You find it in the Apple Store later. I ser Andrew, I searched for MagSafe Duo in the Apple Store app. Nothing. Nothing came up. Actually, that's not true. Like, the Zag 3-in-1, like, Mophie charging thing comes up. All these third-party things comes up. And then I see the horrific news that it seems like Apple has discontinued the Apple MagSafe battery pack that had lightning and the MagSafe Duo, and I, like I get it, with Qi 2 and accessory makers, third-party accessory makers, can do 15-watt charging from their third-party devices. Maybe it's not as necessary for Apple to have these first-party solutions, but my goodness, the Apple MagSafe battery pack was one of the few that did not cook your phone as it charged. It, just, it didn't get hot, and the MagSafe Duo was just the thinnest and most compact MagSafe charger that you could take like it was just almost like Andrew was just holding up It's like paper thin almost and while there are some similar options like the Mophie 3 in 1 Nothing has been as thin as this and I was really hoping Apple did just a slightly updated version So the Apple watch ultra could charge without you having to like tilt the little thing back or whatever It is thinner than an AirPods Pro 2 cases Andrew is holding up in the video youtube.com slash home insider I bemoan the loss of these devices, Andrew. It is it saddens me. It saddens me. I'm, I'm so sad. And these also had such good first party mm -hmm. support. I mean, yes. the the battery pack <laughs> would show in like you know the battery widget, and you would exactly. see the thing in there would also show like on your lock screen, and it had like the bi directional charging, so you could plug it in and turn it into a Qi charging pad, and it would do both. Like, and I Apple didn't really say anything about bi directional charging. And we like yes, this worked. So basically, you could you could plug in your iPhone physically with a cable, and it would charge both your phone and Apple's MagSafe battery pack. That has yet to be a feature in any third-party accessory. I don't think that's something that third-party accessory makers have access to. I don't know if Qi Two enables that, but that's it. Like, there's not another one. I don't get. I know it. it it's so it's so sad. Like it, it's it's I mean, maybe it's dumb, but. I really liked, like, those are, like, those little things. Those are what makes Apple's different is that user experience and those little details. The ones that, you know, cost more 
for Apple to do and work with like its developers and like all the stuff to make happen. And like you said, like there's nothing I have not seen anything as good as MagSafe Duo. This is it's so freaking tiny. I just slip it into like my Peak Design little tech pouch that I take everywhere, and it yes. fits in this tiniest little pocket. Yes. And I mean, I wanted to see a faster Apple Watch puck on it. That was the only thing that I wanted to see on here. I mean, mm-hmm. even uh, aside from USB C, but. It, it's perfect. I, I don't need a three in one for travel. Like the two in one is perfect. My AirPods can go on the Apple Watch side, and the AirPods last so long anyway. It's no big deal. Heck, they can go on the AirPods side or the Apple Watch side now with the right, new ones. Right, either one. So like literally, it's like whatever I'm charging, I just put it on the other side. This thing is phenomenal. And we when have we seen one that uses like this much you know metal in here? Like it just it feels nice. It's hefty weight. Like it just has such a premium feel to it. And now we're left with third party alternatives. And while there are a lot of good ones. It's it's a disappointment. They're I think chunky. part of this, like, this is a good travel charger for me. Like, I like it at home and on the way. Yeah. But um, also, Apple has standby mode in iOS 17, and this wouldn't support that. So I wonder yeah. if that was part of the reason. But when you're traveling, like, I think that works. Yeah, and it was just, like, the durability, too. Because I know when the MagSafe Duo was first launched, it was... Is this going to last? You know, the little uh, membrane that holds the flaps. But I've had two. Me and my spouse have used it since they launched with the iPhone 12. I've taken it on camping trips. We've used it in hotel rooms. Like, actually many trips. Like, it was the travel charger. I left it in the travel bag. And on, on a good amount of trips since it launched. And it's, you know, durability has held up. It's been convenient. So, anyway, it's sad. Third-party accessory makers. Hopefully someone makes a thin charger like that um amazing if it would have like an, a fast apple watch charger i mean this uh anchor cube you know it has an apple watch fast charger and the apple watch thing is like pretty thin like this is the whole apple watch deal and so i feel like you could have a magsafe duo-esque like two in one but with a fast apple watch charger maybe where the uh actual puck for the phone elevates so you can still use standby mode Uh, Even if it's not elevated off the table, it can just kind of be like nightstand right next to you. So I don't know. Hopefully a third party makes something similar. But yes, we say goodbye to the MagSafe battery pack and the MagSafe Duo. I need something. I need something to lift my spirits, Andrew. And I tell you, I think I know just the thing. I know just the thing to lift my spirits. (laughs) That is today's (laughs) first sponsor, which is Factor, because that's how excited I love getting a Factor box in the mail all these incredible meals. Listen, it's the fall season. It's pumpkin spice lattes everywhere. You got pumpkins, you got leaves. So don't spend time just going to the grocery store and dealing with all of that. You know, it gets crazy around the holidays anyways. Instead, order a box of Factor. It's America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit to help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. I think you told me, uh, didn't you just recently get a box? You just got another one? You loved it. Yes, we just had a box. Faith had this one that was herb crusted chicken mm. with like this pureed cauliflower, which also Harrison loved like the mashed Ooh. cauliflower. Like he was like yes. jumping up and down like to get more of it. And then I had this <laughs> pork, chili pork, like mac and cheese uh, oh macaroni goodness. or something with broccoli wow. on the side. Oh, oh, it was so good. Oh. It was so good. I really love these meals. Amazing. Listen, they're fresh. Never frozen meals. They're ready in just two minutes in the microwave. I do the seven minutes in the toaster oven, and it is mm-hmm. it's just wonderful. Do you do the toaster oven? You toaster oven Absolutely. Here? Every time. Yeah, Every toaster time. oven is it's the, it's the way to go. They, they just chef's kiss, as you would. I think it's <laughs> applicable here. And you can get a ton of stuff. You can also get add-ons. You can get 45-plus add-ons with bre- add-ons with breakfast items like apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites. I do love the egg bites potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet or there's even for a wellness boost they have beverage options like cold pressed juices shakes and smoothies i actually like their smoothies they have a mango and they have a banana strawberry just everything everything tastes amazing also they have a bunch of options you can choose 34 plus weekly flavor packed fresh never frozen meals they have also options like keto if you want to do stuff like that and there's just awesome i can highly recommend and this September, you can get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals, enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess, no going to the grocery store. Head to factormeals.com slash homekit50 and use the promo code homekit5050 to get 50, that's half, 50% off. That's code homekit50 at factormeals.com slash homekit50. 
50 to get 50% off. That link and promo code is in the show notes. Just click it there and get it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to love it. I love it. Andrew loves it. It's wonderful. Factor. Factor. Boom. You know what I wish I could have is, a, is an ultra wideband generation two chip in my factor meal box. So I just know exactly when it, when it comes, I just get a notification. Boom. You don't right want there. a U2. You want a second generation <laughs> ultra wideband chip. Listen, Apple talked a lot about this second generation ultra wideband chip. It's in the iPhone 15. It's in the Apple watch series nine and ultra two. They called the first ultra wideband chip, the U1. Do you think because of the band, that's why they didn't just say the U2 chip. <laughs> Could that be the only reason? I mean, I didn't think about this, but now that's all I can think about. <laughs> I mean, the first one was U1. Like, Apple literally called it the U1. And this entire event, I was like, second generation ultra wideband chip. Like, that's a mouthful. Can't we just say U2? And maybe, I don't know, maybe Bono was like cease and desist. Bono also <laughs> trademarked it for... <laughs> The use in wireless protocol. I, I, w I wish, I, I would love to just like, okay, if you want to do a skit, I don't know if we want to talk about the environmental skit, but if, if there was a skit, I wish it was Tim Cook calling Bono, just saying, hey, Bono, listen, we got this chip. It's, we're going to call it a U2. You guys okay with that? I can't do a Bono accent, but I can just see him being like, <laughs> no, and just hangs up the phone. Maybe that was it. Maybe that's, maybe that's the call that happened. I don't know. But I will say, I feel like this is actually one of, the bigger upgrades, as I feel like in hardware within the Series 9, Apple Watch especially, and then the iPhone 15, not only will you be able to do Precision Find My for people, like they showed in the keynote, which is really cool, so you can actually see like so-and-so is 30 feet that direction, but the U2, I'm going to call it the U2 chip, whatever. The U2 <laughs> chip, they, Apple also said it's going to work three times farther away, which I think is going to really help if you lose something in the house. And a lot of times, like, you kind of had to be nearish the room the thing is in for the Precision Find My to, like, kick in. So hopefully three times faster will actually get, a, you know, just better, uh, just more range on it. And then also things like airdrop, name drop, things like that, I imagine, would be improved, too. So I'm excited about the U2 chip. Oh, yeah. Plus, you can mm -hmm. use Precision Finding from your Apple Watch Series 9 or Apple Watch Ultra 2 to find your iPhone. Now, yes. Steven. Mm. I don't know if this has ever come up where you're trying to find your phone, but you don't want to make it ding because exactly. it's loud, yes. um, whether it's because you have a child or because you're embarrassed. Uh, now you can just <laughs> use your watch and literally get the little arrow precision finding on your Apple Watch to your iPhone. Does it show the arrow, though? That is my yes. question. I because in the so. Because in the keynote, it showed like a feet distance. And then it would like lessen the feet distance, and then the screen turns green. But I never saw an arrow, so I was hold a little up, I got concerned. My, let me pull up my video that I did. Oh, hold on, gotta watch an ad first. <laughs> Watching an ad <laughs> for your own video because I, okay, I watched let's this skip the ad. and several times I did, I could not see an arrow, which maybe makes sense because the watch, you know, depending on how your wrist is orientated, maybe it would not be accurate with an arrow. But I don't know. You tell me. Okay, so they don't do an arrow. But it is, hold on, I'll, I'll send this to okay. you. There's no a error. little, there's an indicator, but it, it gives you a directional indicator. So yes, it's not a okay. pointy arrow, but it is a directional indicator. So you know, it basically is like a circle and they highlight the direction on the circle that you need to face to get there. So like okay. that little white, there's like a white shaded part that will point you in the oh, direction. Oh, oh. So you oh, follow I see that. It. Okay, okay, that's pretty, that's pretty slick. I'm down for that then. Very cool. This will be the uh, the chapter art, of course, as we talk about the, the U2 chip uh, with Bono. Uh, so, okay, that's good. That's very good. But I'm excited for this, and I think the, the precision for people, I think there's a lot of situations, like if you're at a, a like a fair carnival theme park, probably this a big deal. all the time. Oh, my goodness. And then you're especially. like, where are you at? I'm by the lemonade stand. There's eight <laughs> lemonade stands. Which <laughs> exactly. one is it? I'm looking for you. Exactly. And honestly, like... For kids, you know, you know, typically I always think of the Apple Watch SE for kids, and I did not. I don't think the Apple Watch SE was updated with any of this stuff. No. But this kind of U2 chip on a watch for a child, and then being able to do the precision find my for your kids. Like, but does that work to the watch, or does it only work to a phone? Oh shoot, that's a new wrinkle. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna test it, but I don't I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I feel like so you it need just... two of the series nines or a series nine and an ultra 
and then try to fi- I don't know how you like you gotta find the watch not ah, the phone. So that's that's a good oh that's a good question all right well well maybe we'll have to do a follow-up on that but I'm excited for the U2 chip and whatever songs come with it unless it's pre-installed in iTunes like that one <laughs> U2 album that everybody hated and that was ridiculous so anyway uh, I also want to talk to you about this is not really home kit or ultra wideband related but I want to talk to you about colors <laughs> I want Dude, to talk about colors. the panic is real <laughs> right? I don't know as we record it is before pre-order moment <sighs> Uh, as you hear this, it will be post pre-order m- moment, but I mean, I'm sure. Obviously, Andrew and I are going with the pro phones, but you got four options. You got the white titanium, you got the natural titanium, black titanium, and the blue titanium. Those are our four options for a phone. I already pre-pre-ordered because I do the Apple iPhone upgrade program, and so I had to kind of choose my model already. But Andrew, what what are you waffling between? What is, what is your ch- <laughs> okay? Yeah. Okay. I. Yeah. I yeah. I don't I don't know. Um, I have so <laughs> many trains of thought, and they're just crashing into one another, making a mess oh, inside my, my brain. Um, because Trigger. I'll tell you, like I've been looking for like a matte black iPhone for the longest time, and that just sounded so so sexy and sleek. Like I I wanted sure, that matte black sure. iPhone, and we basically have that this year. We're gonna have these brushed matte sides, and we're gonna have the matte back. Like this is pretty close. It's not as full black on the back as I would want, like the old iPhone was. Um, it's still just dark, but it looks great. I've been talking about going for the silver version for the past like couple of years now because I've always been on yeah. these dark ones. For the, I used to switch when Apple did white and black. Every other year, I'd go white one, then a black one, white one, black one. And then now we're here, I've been just kind of sticking with the darker ones. Um, yeah. Right. But then there's blue, which is like an all-new color. Yes. And that looks cool it's a, i mean a brand new color and then you got titanium basically that is the natural you know, titanium. Would, i feel like it would I, I can't tell how much in like just from the pictures and even like videos how much of a difference there is between the natural titanium and the white other than the white back um right it's hard to tell like from the sides and like my watch looks silver i does your you have an ultra right doesn't I have an it ultra. look just silver it looks it looks more silver. Lighting has a huge thing to do with it. I will say, um, yeah, M. Quan has a YouTube video with like a focuses on the colors of the phones, and I will say I've been between the natural titanium, which some have described as a starlight. He actually said it looks just like the Apple Watch Ultra titanium, and now. But the thing is, the back of the phone is glass. It is not actually titanium. And so the glass, yeah. is it can't look exactly like the Apple Watch because that is the raw titanium. So the edges of the natural titanium will look just like an Apple Watch Ultra, but the back obviously is glass. I'm between the natural and the blue, and I pre-pre-ordered the blue. I, I got the blue one. I'm a little I'm a little concerned because a couple people have or I watched the uh, Snazzy video Snazzy Labs and he was like the PVD process that they use to color this stuff if you get a scratch like on the edge of this phone it's going to reveal the uncolored titanium because it is not like a it's not colored all the way through uh, which you could also see on the older black titanium series seven I believe the last time you could get a titanium Apple Watch. Uh, he showed pictures of that watch, and you basically see the lighter titanium in a deep enough scratch on the watch. So I use a case most of the time with my iPhone, so I'm not too worried about it. But I also fear I made a, the wrong choice, and I should have gone natural titanium, but I don't know. I will say I've seen a couple of videos of the blue, and it to me, in a few of the different lighting scenarios, it looked like purplish sometimes. So I, mm. think, I think I've near eliminated blue, I think. Pink. That's the one I'm. So <laughs> now I'm I'm debating between maybe the other three. I don't like Starlight, but I also like I would like to match my Apple Watch. So that's I think right. part of my decision is like I don't I don't want really want Starlight. And it's kind of tar- hard to tell just how cream colored is it versus right. You know more uh, just more, if it was like a lighter gray I would be good, but I can't tell if it's like a you know creamy color or if it's gray. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, know. but I'm going to Pro Max in and, and one yeah. of four colors. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm doing the blue, so I'll be able to show that off. And, I, and for the first time ever, I'm going Pro Max because that 5X telephoto lens, I mean, you got to you gotta do it. So I'm hoping I don't get carpal tunnel in my pinky or uh, RSI, whatever it is. So 
We'll see. But th- those are the colors. Now, I also want to talk about one more color before we move on to iOS 17, and that are the fine woven cases because Apple said no more leather. We're not not doing any more leather on anything. And so the new material now is fine woven. You can still get silicone cases, but fine woven is the new, uh, I guess, nicer case. Andrew literally has 1,000 of these cases in his hand right now. And uh, I ordered one. I, I forgot what color I ordered. But, Andrew, show us, talk to us. Fine woven. How does it feel? How does it look? Okay, so here are the cases. There are five wow. colors of wow. fine woven. We'll hit the high points, but I'm going to have a whole dedicated video up by now, so it'll be, you know, link in show notes and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have kind of like a tan color here at the that's, bottom. That's the one I bought. I bought that one. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to do this to poo-poo your decision. My least favorite of the colors. It's just oh, not, my goodness. It, it's <laughs> just a little brown for me, but it's not brown. Like, I wish like, it would actually would have been a brown. I don't know. I chose the blue phone. Black. I was thinking the blue showing through the tan. Oh, my word. I, I didn't really. Okay, so that's the black one. Okay. Black. Yeah. Okay, we're showing that YouTube.com. This is dark green. Inside. Dark green. I do like the green. Green is my favorite color. I like that. Okay. Two left. We have this, like, purplish color. I, I like this color. one a lot. That looks nice. I like that. Maroon. And then Maroon finally five. the blue. Oh, blue is nice, too. Now, blue is a nice. couple of points to highlight. We have the fine woven on the back, which is super silky soft. Um, we have a raised camera bump, as we usually do with Apple's uh, cases. On right. the sides, we have still anodized aluminum buttons that are going to match the color of the case. Now, I'm trying to see. I believe I don't. I can't tell if there's any fabric on it, but the sides are hard, so the fabric right. doesn't wrap all the way around. So you end up with. I can't tell if there's just a not even paper thin, but a ultra thin la- like layer of that fabric that goes around, or if it's just textured. But the sides mm. are plastic. Um, okay. The back, what? it almost has like a little bit of like padding to it. So it does mm. feel, it feels super duper soft as I pet this case. <laughs> Petting the fine wool case. Does it feel like suede? A, I've heard people describe it as suede. Yeah, a little bit like that. Um, it does seem to gather dust pretty easily. Like I'm trying to, sometimes mm. I see you're trying to like wipe off the dust on these cases for like some product shots. And mm. it's like, are you kidding me? You're, sti- you're sticking in the fibers. Get Get off of there. <laughs> Andrew's now, now cleaning his fine woven case live on camera. <sighs> okay. I'm going to say, yes. Stephen, the what? other cases were better. Oh. Like, not environmentally, take. but materialistically, <laughs> they <laughs> felt a lot nicer. These really? don't feel as nice, but they're still 60 bucks. Um, the leather were 100. Feel plasticky. Right? Were they 100? Okay. I, so, well, these are cheaper then. These are cheaper. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, I don't know. Okay. They it's definitely good. just don't feel as premium as the leather ones did. Mm. I don't like the plasticky sides. Um, and I'm worried yeah. about how this holds up over time. I mean, like, I'm sure Apple has tested this copiously, but I don't know. I'm worried how it's going to like clean, how stuff's going to mm. stick to it. Um, how, and just how it's going to, I don't know. What, uh, so first thing, the action button. I, so there is actually, it covers the action button. You actually get a Correct. button on the case, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I'm curious how that. I mean, you know, Apple's cases are always very good with, you know, depressing buttons and responding. Uh, what do you think? Because I usually get a one leather and one silicone case when I get a phone. A because I like the feeling of leather, but B I live in Florida, and the problem there is <laughs> there's a lot of sweat that happens. Sometimes you go to the beach and there's a lot of wet stuff and sand and i had found that the leather case obviously you're not supposed to get leather wet but leather cases like if they did get wet like it was a bad situation like it, it just like it, it kind of ruined the look and so i would use the silicone cases if i knew i was going to be outside or maybe sweating or maybe like going to a concert or event i usually like the silicone because it just felt a little more durable so with the fine woven i've got i'm on the website i'm going to try and find some kind of description on this but do we think, like, water-wise, will it be any better at, like, taking some water contact or may- or not? What do we think? I think so. I mean, it's just, it's just a fabric, so I feel like it's going to dry as easily, whereas leather would have... So I'm, I I disagree a little bit with, the, like, the water and the leather. Like, I use, like, a lot of the Nomad ones and the Mujo ones, mm. and I didn't mind. Like, when they would get a little bit wet, they would wear. And, like, at first, maybe it would almost, like, bubble a little bit. 
Um, right. Like it would swell where it had soaked up the water and where right. like temporarily it would look bad. But the more you would use it and just continue to use it, it would just develop more of a patina and look to it. And I didn't mind it at all. Okay. Um, but with these, I think it would it would dry pretty quick. But like I, if you can see it, close up. Like focus, I got like left a fingernail mark in this already. Like I was gonna uh, wipe off. Oh uh, yeah, interesting. Okay. So I, I like know. the look. It's gonna I be like interesting. Yeah, I like the look. We'll have to see how how the feel is. I got one coming, and uh, I'm just if the Pro Max is gonna be so big. It's gonna be such a big phone. This is the Pro Max size. If you didn't know, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it doesn't look big in your hand for some reason, but... It's a little... So it is slightly smaller. Um, Like, this is the 14 Pro Max. Like, you're not going to see much of a difference here um, between, like, a case and that. But basically, the case is almost as big as the phone, um, if that gives you any indication. Like, it is slightly bit smaller. Does Uh, the camera bump look like it's any bigger? Does the camera bump on the 15 Pro Max look maybe the same? If it's it's similar, which is what we saw with our dummy units. Like That's I've got, right. I got. Do you know what's a bad idea, Stephen? When you have dummy units of phones, like literally piled up everywhere, don't set your phone down with them because you'll never find your phone again. Okay, you're gonna set it down, and then one of these is my phone, and I right. don't, you know, don't know which. Which one, is, which one um, is which? But yeah, this is That's this fun. is our dummy. Let's see. I mean, oh, okay. it fits in. Basically, perfectly. The buttons are sticking out the side a little bit because they don't uh, depress. But oh, they would depress, no, it fits right. perfectly. Like, wow, like look a at that! Freaking glove. I got these units. in July. Wow. I got these in July, and this is spot on. That's wild. Well, you know, so many case manufacturers like announce iPhone 15 cases day before or on launch day of the like the keynote. And it's clearly like they're using these dummy models, or Apple has given them specifications. Like that's where this stuff comes from. So, I have I have <laughs> boxes of of cases. So, <laughs> right. Well, very <sighs> cool. So fine woven. Well, we I will uh, get mine in hand. We'll talk more about it next week. But iOS 17 comes out today. I want to talk about some of the updates before we do? We have a second and final sponsor for today, and I love these guys. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Shopify. Listen, if you need to sell anything online on the internet, the interwebs. Shopify is how you do it. I actually, a while ago, and even still recently, I like to sell podcast merch from a little movie podcast. And I use Shopify to sell that merch because selling with Shopify is just so easy. And you, you can offer so many different things. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing. revolutionizing. Couldn't even say it. That's how amazing it is. Millions of businesses worldwide, whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IP already, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. Where you're, whether you're selling satin sheets or podcast merch, you can do it all with Shopify. I'd say specifically, uh, I have set up Shopify with some clients where I've built their website and all the different e-commerce platforms that they could choose from, they, they just didn't offer what they needed, but Shopify did. Sometimes it's like unique discounts for subscription-based products or digital products or like limiting access to digital downloads after a certain amount of time, like 24, 48 hours. Shopify has all of those granular controls and it was just a no-brainer because I knew Shopify could do whatever you know, specific discount or buying options that clients wanted. And Shopify also kind of has like a whole ecosystem around it, which I know, Andrew, you you like the the shop app and the other stuff that's going on with that. Tell me again about that. Yeah, there's so many cool little things with Shopify that just make it like this really nice ecosystem for shoppers, creators, like everyone in the entire process. Like it supports like the Apple like wallet tracking, which is like one of the only ones to do that. You have the dedicated app where all of your purchases come in. So you just buy from these different places and then it all lives in one little app as well. And you can see all of your progresses, leave feedback. All of that stuff. Um, the website, it allows it to easily support things like Apple Pay. Like, it's just a really nice ecosystem across the board. It's amazing. So good. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is truly a global force powering Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklyn and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash homekit, all lowercase, Go to Shopify.com slash HomeKit to take your business to the next level today. That's Shopify.com slash HomeKit. The link is in the show notes. You can just click it there. Thank you to Shopify. Shopify.com slash HomeKit. 
All right, iOS 17 came out, and Apple released a PDF, 18-page PDF. I read every page. I read every every update. Not a ton, uh, like new just to remind everyone i had forgotten already find my item sharing coming with ios 17 so you could share your air tags with a family member or a trusted contact home activity is coming to the home app so you can see who's unlocking doors and who's opening stuff that's cool and then one thing i did not see before i don't think but it was in this pdf and there's an intelligent device list so basically when you want to control your apple tv or a speaker you want to enjoy content there. The iPhone is going to use on-device intelligence to learn your preferences over time and show you devices in the AirPlay list in order of relevance. I thought that was pretty cool because sometimes, like I know for me, I have a lot of AirPlay 2 devices between Sono speakers and HomePods and just everything. And so uh, I'm very curious how well this is going to order that list. But it's going to use on-device intelligence to surface the most uh, applicable devices. That's exciting. Cool. Yeah, we yeah. also had with uh, so iOS 17 also enables you to find your Apple TV remote, which yes. finally showed up for me, Stephen. Once I upda- yes. updated to the RC, and like I thought this was like just a me thing, but apparently it was working for other people. And none of my three Apple TVs did it until I right. updated the RC, and now all of them do it. So I don't know why I wasn't special enough to get it actually during the beta process, but hey, that works now. <laughs> and then. Nice. We have uh, this new grid forecast thing that came out with the actual right. RC of iOS 17. This was like part of Apple's big eco yeah. initiative. Um, right. But yeah, this lives in the home app and it shows you when it's, it's better to use copious power. So it kind of looks at your location and right. will determine when the power grid is being less used and when it's using like clean energy, renewable energy. And it'll recommend that time for doing something like you know, running a dryer or washer or uh, perhaps like charging your EV. Like it can do, it can tell you like when the best time to do that is. And to me, this just looks like it's ripe for automation, right? Like imagine you had like a smart plug or an EV or, you know, a matter connected dishwasher. And then as soon as there was clean power, run the dishwasher. Like that's cool. Or start charging the EV. So, like, I can see all that being tied in. It works on Apple Watch. There are widgets for it. Um, and there is a little pill, little graph thing there in the Home app. That's pretty cool. It's a nice-looking graph. I'll, I'll be curious to see what it says uh, in different people's locations. I imagine the evening hours is usually going to be the, the typical cleaner energy time, uh, like this little graph shows. But that's pretty cool. That is cool. Uh, now, also in the event, very quickly, AirPods. We did not get USB-C AirPods Max nor did we get USB-C AirPods 3, nor did we get any AirPods upgrade or update, like AirPods 4, uh, which I thought was part of the rumor that even Mark Gurman had said we might see AirPods. But what we did see is kind of an update. AirPods Pro 2, You can, if you buy them right now, uh, it comes now with a USB-C case, but you can't buy that case separately. Unlike, you know, back when AirPods 2 launched and you can get a wireless charging case just buying the case for your AirPods 1, no dice. You cannot get a USB-C only case for your AirPods Pro 2 because they're not exactly the same AirPods Pro 2. There's some weird thing going on inside those these AirPods Pro 2 with the USB-C case because one unique feature is that you'll be able to get lossless audio when you use these AirPods Pro 2 with USB-C with Apple Vision Pro. But for some reason, if you have an AirPods Pro 2, like I do right here with the lightning cable, because you bought these when they first came out, I guess you do not get lossless audio. I don't know if you focus. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you do not get lossless audio with these AirPods Pro 2, which is, I think, strange. They didn't say any new chip. They didn't say there's anything kind of new inside, but there's there must be something, right? What is happening? I don't even know. It's so bizarre. And we actually had a whole internal debate. Like, there was, like, three of us in our editorial chat arguing on <laughs> whether or not there was a difference. And I was like, no. In the PR, it says that these new ones support lossless audio, but it does not say that the original second-generation AirPods Pro do. So the second generation, second generation AirPods Pro 
<laughs> support lossless audio on Vision Pro, but the original ones don't. So it is a really weird difference, like because it, it doesn't make any sense. So like I totally understand why we had this like debate because like they're the same. It's the same chip. So why why doesn't it work? And I could not tell you why, but there is two versions of the second generation AirPods Pro. One supports lossless audio to Vision Pro. The other does not. Um, there's two, so aside from USB C, they also say they improved the dust and durability, dust resistance and durability of the case. So right. whatever they've done there. That's so strange. Like it is the strangest thing. And like they're not calling it another generation. They're just saying AirPods Pro 2 with USB C. Like what? <laughs> what? I, I, it is one of the strangest like minor updates. And so I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to buy new AirPods Pro 2 just for a USB C. And Apple Vision Pro is not coming out till next year. You know, lossless audio, whether or not people actually hear a difference, that is also debatable. So. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not, are you going to get them to at least try them out? I assume. I'll probably get them out. I mean, even just to do video stuff with. I don't. I don't know if yeah. I'm going to end up keeping them or not. I don't know if they're worth shelling out the money. I mean, even like, I'm sure the market second or secondhand market for AirPods Pro Two will probably be pretty decent. Sure. Um, you know, my wife's AirPods original AirPods Pro are having issues. Like she says, like her right earbud isn't working anymore. Um, huh. yeah, so maybe this is an opportunity. Uh, just to upgrade hers and I'll move mine to because she keeps hers basically in the kitchen and she uses them for phone calls 90% of the time other than when we travel so she wants to put them in talk to her you know family and stuff and yeah, yeah. just walk around hands free <clears throat> but she also needs that finds my case so maybe this is <laughs> sure. a good chance to upgrade hers uh, and sure. then I'll take the new USB-C ones because she just uses MagSafe. I don't know. I don't think it's, it's definitely not worth an upgrade unless you're like, man, I'm really a specific person that wants imperfect lossless audio between my AirPods and my Vision Pro that I'll buy next year. Like yeah. by the time Vision Pro comes out, these will probably be on sale at some right. point. That's and true. I just think like if you're buying Vision Pro, you might as well spend the extra... If you look at the delta between selling your existing pair and buying a new pair, I feel like if you're buying Vision Pro, you can spend the hundred dollars difference to just upgrade your AirPods. So I guess for right. those people, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see uh, once people get these in hand. I think what's going to happen, Stephen. This is my this mm. is my theory. Uh-huh. We're going to get an H2 chip in like a future Mac or something. Um, uh... Maybe that'll enable lossless audio to other products and not just Vision Pro. Okay, I can see that. Maybe when the AirPods Max gets USB-C too. Huh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> anyway. Maybe. All right. And finally, I think I think we've done it. We've we tried to keep it to like HomeKit Ultra Wideband, uh, you know, home updates here from all of that. I think we did pretty good. And uh, this last one I'm very excited about. We mentioned this on, I think, last week's episode. This is the High Rise from 12 South, the MagSafe you know, dock, the the three in one charger that Apple used in its keynote, even back at WWDC for standby mode. And so this is pretty cool. And you have a review here up on the site. Andrew, tell us, how is it? One quick correction. So they were showing oh. off, I believe, a different product, like the Forte or something. Oh, for you real? Look it up oh. for me if you can. Just kidding. Um, yeah, they were showing a different a different 12 South product. I think it was, it was either the High Rise, High Rise Forte, but it was a white stand where you put in Apple's puck into the top of it. Um, so it didn't have built-in MagSafe. But that was the one that Apple, that they showed because it was white. So oh. this one is okay, all kidding. new. This is the High Rise 3 Deluxe. This yeah. just came out, was just announced. So this is a brand new one. They say they've like partnered with Apple on it. Everything is MFI certified, your MagSafe puck, your Apple Watch puck fast charging on the Apple Watch Puck. Your Apple Watch Puck moves up from the bottom. Here I can disconnect it because I have it behind my desk here. Lost that cord forever. Uh, (laughs) Here it is. So your Apple Watch Puck can rotate up so you can use nightstand mode on your Apple Watch or put it flat if you would prefer not to have it like staring at you. You have your MagSafe Puck at the top and it pivots. You got 35 degree angle so it can go almost flat and almost, almost perpendicular. You have an additional chi spot on the back here where you can place your AirPods so you can charge your AirPods there. It does use this typical barrel connector to plug in, which is not my favorite. Would have preferred USB-C, um, but they kept things so slim. So the base of this is all metal, so it's like nicely weighted, has a good feel to it. 
vegan nice. leather surface on the bottom so it feels super soft touchy like just a, like a fancy set of headphones like the ear cups it feels really nice and soft what's big news is they actually have a leather vegan leather cover for Ooh. the airpod or the uh, magsafe puck so this is like the first one so aside from your cube which has a plastic one with that silicone ring right. this is the, the second one ever to not be white like it's right. something different um That's nice. but yeah that goes right there at the top this is very cool like this whole thing is just metal and nice and this is this kind of to me explains why they've been using that 12 south charger and all their things because this was coming and they were right. they're going to update it all with like this one now because this is just right. so pretty it's so slim sleek i really really like this charger so this is this is probably going nice. by on my bad side bad side now replacing the other one that was there 100 percent. i like how narrow it is yeah, yeah, there you go. The 12 South Forte Max. This is the Forte that was used in like the WWDC <laughs> keynote. You're right. This is like a $40 thing, and you do have to put your own MagSafe puck in it. And so that was, the, the, yeah, that's that. This is not that. Andrew talking, <laughs> Andrew reviewed this thing, which is the High Rise 3 Deluxe. And uh, yeah, absolutely, this would be the one to get uh, because it looks amazing. And the, the phone thing tilts, the, the watch thing tilts. I mean, this is Perfect very sleek. for standby mode. Yeah, I've used the Belkin three in one since the iPhone twelve uh, by my nightstand. This thing might replace it because it is very sleek looking, and I think has a smaller ish footprint maybe. Uh, because I can tell there, you. see, there's there's the Belkin three in one. Uh, Andrew has this on camera now. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, see, because now with so, I mean they're with, both. They're similar in size, like me, like probably if you actually like looked at their overall area. But for like a nightstand, this is so thin and narrow, which I prefer. Yes. And I don't yeah. need my watch up. I I, no. I really like this this narrower design to it. I think they've yep. done a great job. I mean, I love the Belkin one. Um, I really like yeah. how this displays everything. But for a nightstand, especially, I think this Twelve South one is where it's at. Hundred percent, because but you know, with when it was just when there was no standby mode on the iphone the watch was a nice like nightstand just like tap it for the time or whatever but now that we have standby and it'll even like activate at night when it senses motion which is crazy i, th I saw that as in that pdf feature and so you know I, I this is i think it's pretty ideal so i still love my book in three and one i mean it's great uh but but this thing looks really sleek i'm excited to uh to try this out so very cool. It's the same price too. So you basically at $150, you have three options for three in one MagSafe fast charge Apple Watch chargers. You've got the new one from 12 South, the High Rise 3 Deluxe. You have the Belkin three in one Boost Charge Pro. And then oh. finally, you have the Anchor I'm a Cube, I'm a Cube, I'm a Cube um, <laughs> little charger. So those are your three, wow. all priced at the same thing. They all uh -huh. do the same thing, and it's whatever kind of works for you. So, like, the, the Anchor one is probably better for travel because um, it's it's a cube. And then yeah. you have the Belkin one's a little bit bigger, and I like the polished metal look to it. And then we have this one that's really nice and narrow from, I think, more compact surfaces, and I like the the all-black look of it. That is very cool. All right, well, that that is a show. Lots of exciting things. Everything arrives this Friday, September 22nd. So iPhone 15, Apple Watch Ultra 2. Uh, Andrew's going to have videos on all of that and already videos up on the channel. So check out the links in the show notes, of course. Stay tuned to AppleInsider.com as any news breaks. And uh, enjoy iOS 17 today. you got iOS 17, iPadOS 17. macOS Sonoma will actually be next week. Uh, you'll have to wait a, a little while for macOS Sonoma, one more week. Uh, but all the updates to, like, tvOS and all of that, watchOS 10 comes out today. And so uh, have fun upgrading all the things. You know, you can watch this show. Well, it's too late now. You've already watched and listened to the show. But uh, you could have listened and watched this while all your uh, devices updated. So uh, there you go. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Check out YouTube.com slash HomeKit Insider. You can leave a comment there and watch every week. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time. See you guys.